So uh, you see uh, a screen, on, I mean, you see the patient, which is 38 year old female, with, presented with fracture D12, which was a burst fracture with incomplete neurology. But uh, she wakes up with a paraplegia after the surgery, and this was the reason. You know, it was a screw. So it was a misplaced screw. Similarly, you've had patients uh, uh, like when you were doing a degenerative lymphoconiosis, patient wakes up with a weakness in the leg after surgery, again, because of the misplacement of the screw. Uh, another case where you have, uh, uh, again, a misplacement of screw causing uh, progressive weakness of both the lower limbs in case of 54-year-old female with degenerative spondylolisthesis. Now, what, was, what went wrong in these cases was actually a screw. So basically, uh, if you look at the, there are multiple studies which have been done like this, and I'm just quoting one of them, wherein they did uh, a study on accuracy of medical screw insertion. Uh, it was a prospective CD study in 30 low back patients. Uh, it's published in European Spine Journal, uh, 152 screws were put by all senior spine surgeons, and they noticed there were 23% perforated or misplaced medical screws. But fortunately, only 1% had no logical injury. So uh, we should not just learn how to insert pedicle screws. We need to learn how to insert pedicle screws in the pedicle and safely. So I'm going to speak only on the lumbar pedicle screws. Uh, uh, the dorsal pedicle screws will be taken care of, uh, will be uh, take, talk, talked by Dr. Apaji. And uh, so basically, if we talk about the indications, basically, you have this, basically the indications are the instability when you're dealing with a fracture or you are doing a tumor, you're doing infection, deformity or listhesis where you will need to do instrumentation and you need some stability uh, with your instrumentation in the spine. And before we move further, we need to also know what are the, what, what, what's important to know is the anatomy uh, and the anatomical relation of the pedicles, uh, the thoracic, lumbar and sacral vertebrae. We need to, we will be talking about the technique of putting the pedicles through, starting from the patient positioning, exposing the, uh, the spine for that the pedicle screw insertion technique by, uh, by uh, with the entry point, what should be the entry point, what should be the trajectory, and what should be done when you are in trouble, when you have already <laughs> misplaced, we should talk about it in brief. So we all uh, are aware of our pedicle anatomy, our vertebral anatomy. Uh, we have our vertebrae, I'm going to speak only from lumbar, from L1 to L5 and sacrum. I'm just going to brush on that. Uh, we all know the pedicle is a tubular bony structure which connects body to the posterior elements and it has identical predefined trajectories which are taken by the screw itself. So you are, you, you are supposed to be going through the pedicle and you need to know your anatomy very well so as to place it safely. Anatomically, if we talk about the lumbar spine, uh, the pedicle trajectory, we have to take care of two basic things. First, the entry point. And then you have to be, you are, you are supposed to be aware of what is the lateral medial convergence and what is the cephalocaudal angulation. So these two things or three things, in fact, would make your, uh, you know, uh, insertion of a pedicle screw in the lumbar spine very safe. So we're just go, going with that. If you look at this particular graph and we talk about the transverse angle, that is the convergence angle. Uh, the convergence angle is higher, highest is at L5 and it gradually comes down at L1. Speaking only of the lumbar spine, if you look at the first half of the graph there. So the convergence is maximum with L5, reducing down to L1. From, so starts from 25 to 35 degrees in L5 and it goes down to 10 to 15 or maybe 20 degrees in L1. I'm talking about the transverse angle convergence, convergence angle. Similarly, if you look or talk about the cordicephalus angulation, Again, it is, it, is, it is maximum with L1, more or less same in the lumbar spine, but it's maximum with L1 and reduces in L5. You can see the diagram, what I mean by cordo superior angulation. And if we talk about the pedicle width, again, the L5 pedicle is the widest of all, and it gradually, the width of the pedicle reduces down to L1 if you look at the first half of, the pedic of this particular graph. So this would give you a general idea of the anatomy of the pedicle, which would help you in, uh, you know, inserting your pedicles. Uh, if you talk about the anatomy, the, there are certain anatomical relations which are very important to know and visualize 3D when you are put, you know, putting this in, in, in a patient. Mainly you will have the dural sleeve or you will have the cord or the nerve root when you're uh, on, on the middle, middle uh, border of the pedicle. The inferiorly, you, you will have the foramen which would be carrying a nerve root. Laterally, you will have visceral structures, which could be muscle, which could also be a vessel. And anteriorly, again, you will have vessels and thoracic duct in case of thoracic spine. 
Now, coming to technique, uh, positioning is very important. You need to simulate the anatomic position. You have to maintain the lordosis when you are doing a lumbar spine. You need to keep the hip and the knee flexed, as seen the, in, in the diagram below. So that you know your 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 pedicles, you re actually recreating the 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 normal sagittal balance or normal uh, lordosis for the patient. Uh, you, while positioning the patient, you need to be very uh, careful of protecting the bony prominences and the eyes, and obviously you need to prevent hyperabduction of shoulders. Uh, when you expose, you have to mark your level and the incision very precisely using your C arms. Uh, you need to, there are multiple ways of doing it. Some people do it with a, uh, a metallic uh, thing or sometimes you insert a needle and then you take a, a C arm picture. You confirm your level, which that's the first thing that you do, confirming your level. Then you dissect along the bone. So dissection is also a very important part of your uh, insertion of your pedicle screws because dissection, if the picture, if the field is clean, if it is, you know, uh, hemostatic field, nice, nicely dissected out, it is good. So dissecting along the bones would reduce your blood in the field and would give you a good visual visualization. And dissection always is good when you are doing a dissection from order to syphilate direction because that is how the muscles are oriented. Uh, this is how you are supposed to be dissecting. The exposure should laterally expose the pars, facet joint and the transverse process. So by, by saying that, if you see the red part, that's a pars intraarticularis that you need to expose before you insert your pedicle screw. Then you also need to expose some part of the superior facet and the transverse process. So all these three things should be perfectly visualized before you start putting your pedicle screws. Uh, coming to the technique, the entry point, there are three people, I mean, there are three techniques which have been, or three entry points which have been you know, described by Roy Camelli, by Winston and Magrill. The Roy Camley one is the most medial one. And when we talk about the Magrill, that's the most lateral one. So it depends upon how you have been trained and what you're going to choose. But most commonly that we choose, uh, uh, let me talk a little bit about the Roy Camley technique. It's the intersection of the mid transverse process line and the mid facet joint mid facet line the magral uh, technique is junction of the lateral edge of superior facet and the midline of the transverse process and the Winston is the lateral and the inferior corner of the superior facet joint so uh, Roy Kemley the most medial just lateral to it is the magrels and just to go superior and lateral to it is the Winston technique uh, but the usually the most commonly which is used by all of us is the simplified tangent technique where you just connect the uh, mid transverse line and they take a lateral from the superior facet joint and wherever they intersect you take that as the entry point for the uh, lumbar pedicle screws. Uh, technique wise trajectory lateral to medial you have to look at your convergence based on what level you are doing whether you're doing from L1 or whether you're doing L5 based on what angles are there and then again you have to take care of the lateral to medial that is convergence which is assisted by the spinous processes which you see and sometimes the lamina also guides you as to how much of uh, you know med medialization you have to do or convergence you have to achieve when you're putting your probe inside the pedicle superior inferior again you can there are two ways of you know uh, assessing what you are doing it right or not the most easiest is to take the assistance of the lateral x rays which guides you as to your your superior inferior uh, trajectory or you can use and and or you can you know just uh, go perpendicular to the facets so that is one way of going subchondral. So you should ideally target your screws subchondrally where the bone is good and the, the stock, stock of the bone is good. So you get a good purchase there. Uh, so again, if, if you choose your uh, medial uh, entry point like Roy Camelli, you will go a little straighter. And if you choose the most lateral one, then you can medialize your screw more. So again, you have to be very sure what technique you're using and this will guide you as to how much convergence you can afford to do there. Uh, again, trajectory, transverse angle convergence, as you see, it's more in the L5 and reduces down to L1. Uh, Cephalocaudal is again more or less same in, in the lumbar spine, which is obviously little less for L5, but more for L1. Uh, uh, for the S1 screw, again, you start at inferior, just uh, you know, la lateral to uh, uh, S1 facet joint, and you converge more because you just have a very good stock of bone there and you can go for a bicortical or a tricortical purchase depending on where you exactly keep it in the subchondral bone uh, so uh, so the steps or, or the technique of putting a uh, pedicle screw is first step is you decorticate the entry point whichever you choose with the help of burr or a nibbler then you prepare the path along the trajectory that is used that is that is done with the help of a probe uh, uh, 
Now that probe is usually blunt that we use. There are two kinds of probe that you will see. One is a little curve, that is what is, what is, what is called as a Lenkius probe, and the other one is a straight probe. Either can be used based on, on your experience, based on your training. But for lumbar spine, I think a straight one is good enough. And uh, But you need to understand that you're using a blunt probe. You should not force your entry or you know your, your trajectory in the pedicle. You are basically passing through the cancellous bone, so it should go easily. If you are experiencing any resistance during putting your, your, your probe, you need to rethink, reevaluate, reimagine the picture. You may be hitting on one of the balls. So be careful of that. So resistance is not something that should come in your way unless and until it's a sclerotic pedicle. Usually you will just sail through. And most important, you need to have a very good tactile feel. So feel when you are traveling, you just go a little bit down. You can again, you know, do a sound and see for all the walls. Uh, you obviously always confirm your probing with uh, with the with the with the sound that is available, uh, and you feel all the ones that is a superior wall, inferior wall, middle wall, lateral wall, and the anterior wall with the help of a CM. Also, you can do it. You can use there are multiple things now available with the pedigard navigation and EMG and C, which can be again used to uh, you know put your screws uh, most accurately. Now. Uh, Tapping, repalpation, and screw placement, and then happens, and you put your screw there. So uh, I'm just going to skip this thoracic spine trajectory because Dr. Apaji is going to take this. So uh, yeah. So so the problems can be a breach, a perforation, intraoperatively or postoperatively. The preclinical manifestation can be in, in in the form of a leg pain, logical worsening, deficit, implant failure, vessel or visceral damage. And uh, radiological manifestation may not always be there. Some, some most of the times, patient may just be asymptomatic in spite of, uh, you know, a, a misplaced uh, pedicle screw, but within the within the limits. So, if you encounter a, a complication, uh, whether you, and you're contemplating whether there is a revision is required or no revision is required, uh, uh, then uh, if you have a neurological deficit, if if you have leg pain or is the vessel injury then there is no doubt that you will go and revisit the patient and you know you do the uh, required thing screw salvage uh, uh, you always create a new pathway and this is what you do in a thoracic spine but whereas in the lumbar spine you can either use a longer screw or a thicker screw to salvage the, the previous screw sometimes the pedicles are so large you can actually make two entry points or two trajectories in the same pedicle but again, you need to be more careful when you are when you are probing your pedicle in a different trajectory. So conclusion is safely placing pedicle screws is mandatory for adequate mechanical stability. And the carry home message is spinal instrumentation is demanding. Practice makes a man perfect. So please do practice initially. Take as many shoots as you want, and one day will come when you will not need C arms actually. Uh, follow the basic rules. Surgical anatomy is the crux to success, and safe instrumentation is possible. Aim for no error surgery. Thank you so much.